7A1, 7A1, 58 and Union Streets. Reporting probable homicide. Female, unidentified, 58 and Union. Contact the officers. Way to go. Busy night, huh? Normal. Anything to go on? The cab driver. Did he do it or see it? He heard it. Where is he? Right over there. Hey, Pete, give me a big hat. It's maybe 12.10, 12.15. I'm just coming out of the hamburger joint up the street. Next block, you know, what's the name of that? Never mind the name. I ain't outside five seconds when suddenly I hear a scream. I'm petrified. In all my life, I never heard a woman scream like that. I hope I never hear... Then what? Then what? Then suddenly I see a guy come tearing out of the alley. He hops in a car and goes highballing like he's on fire. Must have burned a good inch what of rubber. What kind of guy? What did he look like? I'm a block away. It's pitch black. For all I know, it could have been you. Why didn't you follow him? Officer, I was petrified. I didn't know what to do. I just couldn't think quick enough. Did you get anything? Mm, just what it looked like. She was slugged. One good hit on the head to the trick. Identification? Yeah, rent receipt from the tower apartments. No name, just the room number. One of these flus he's gonna learn. He feels worse about it than you do. Come on, let's take a look at those skid marks. Nice, quiet family neighborhood we live in. When's it gonna stop? Well, you'd think the police would do something about police. it. Police. Well, nice to bring yeah, the kids the up here. The Heights is no place to live. The Heights is all right. Hi, Steve. Hi. Here's a dope on that homicide, 58th and Union. again? How'd you figure that out? Pretty safe guess these days. What's the squeal? Homicide. Great. That thing out there is out of all proportion, Abe. That detail's fouled up. Talk, talk, talk. Talk is cheap, especially when you're on the outside looking in. Who's on the outside? You are. Three piddling months, you're practically walking through the door. Well, crumbs in your bed, Counselor. You were a lousy, smart alley cop. Let's hope you make a better lawyer. What are you doing down here? You're supposed to be uptown at the Marjorie Street Station. The shop's closed. I'm off duty. Who are you kidding, Danny? Shop's never closed in this business. What do you want? It's about those three months, Abe. What three months? Well, you were just saying. The practice, the law, am I leaving the force? Oh, that. I told Pat I'd have a talk with you before I came home tonight. What it is, Abe, I've been having some talks with a big legal outfit. Miller, Pinch, and Pierce. Look at that! They've got a spot for me, Abe, and they don't want to wait. If this keeps up much longer, I'll run out of pins. Abe, I'm asking you. My heart goes out to you. 
Look, I got troubles of my own. Lay off, you and your Miller, Finch, and Bean. I got the whole bloody force, City Hall, the Commissioner, and a million hot and cold running citizens. Dave, hey, it's a wonderful opportunity for me. You're just like all the rest. Everybody wants the police. They want the work done. They crucify us when we miss. But when there's a bond issue for more officers and more equipment, they're not around. When you get a better job and more dough, you're off to the races. Lousy job is going to turn me into a coffee rummy yet. I didn't mean that, Danny. Yeah, sure, Abe. I don't know. Maybe I'm sore. Maybe I'm jealous. Maybe I should have taken those correspondence courses myself. Yes, Commissioner. Yes, it was the Jefferson Heights precinct again. I know, Commissioner. I'll get right on it, Commissioner, on my way down there right now. Abe, I told Pat. Ride down with me if you want. We'll talk about it in the car. I promised Pat I'd be home hours ago. Call Bunko on the face of the city. People ain't safe on the street after dark. Well, you ought to get sputtered. Yeah, it's too stuffy in there. Look at those reporters. Sometimes I think they can smell it like ants on a sugar cube. Hi, Chief. Hi, Greeny. How's it going? Hi, What are you doing up here, Chief? What's up, Chief? What's the deal? Look, you boys know as much as me. A dame was murdered, that's all. Harrison in there won't talk. He just won't see us. Well, you can't blame him for ducking. You boys lately have been giving him a bad time. The department got a new policy? What kind of a stall is it? Nobody's giving you a stall. Take it easy. The public's entitled. We're servants of the public. Listen, loud mouth. Pardon. Now, let's keep our heads. He can't intimidate me. Look, if everybody will calm down, we'll give you everything as soon as we get it. After all, we think of you people like members of the family. You mean play it down? Now, look, Greeny, there's no point in making a whole hurrah about something that can't be helped. Look, everything in due course. Yours for the call, boys, anytime. You know that. All those guys care about us what will sell papers. Here's the car turned down 53rd. Oh, hello, Chief. Oh, hey. Danny? Stay, Peter. Uh, just getting a report on the homicide. You know that case over on Union Street? Yeah, I know about the case on Union Street. Go ahead. Well, then the apartment house manager identified her. Lillian Dean. Lillian Dean? Huh. Nobody. A dame. Used to be a come on a dive called a hut. Sang a little, probably worked the bar trade on the side. A lot of them do. Well, any prints, any clues? What about the getaway car? The lab's checking on the tire markings now. Yeah, like Lily makes herself a lot of friends, you know. All bad. Could be any one of several hundred different guys. Some stray she picked up maybe ten minutes before. Go find him. Well, you know how those kind of girls are. Well, I guess you fellas better start checking with the lab. Yeah, sure, Marty. Only this murder is SOP. No mystery. Tramps, muggers, rapists, the old story. There was none of that. These cases are a dime a dozen around here, like mosquitoes. All it proves is dames like Lily Dean shouldn't walk down dark streets. This was a hit. You positive? Muggers and psychos don't use hot cars. How do you know it's hot? Check on it, you'll find out. Anybody who knew the first thing... Are you sure you're, Danny? We've covered every angle. We're right on it. Now, whatever it was, we'll handle it. Don't worry. I was just suggesting you understand. I understand. I'll wait outside in the squad room. Occupation? Commission agent. What's that you say, Rudy? What I said. You're a bookie, Rudy. For two years, you've been making a book. Well, a bookie only makes a commission. Put down commission agent. Sounds better, nicer. Now I've heard everything. Even the bookies are getting fancier. All right, come on. I need a change of luck around here. I need a change of luck here myself. Look at me. Where'd you learn to play this game, Bledsoe? In the dark? Very funny, O'Neill. Very funny. Come on, dear. Okay, what do we got here? I've been around. I'll bet two. All right. Deuce is still wild? Yeah, Deuce is still wild. Yeah. Yeah. Two. Come on, Rudy. We're going down the hall. yourself a little good on Danforth. What's on your mind? You know what's on my mind. In there, talking it up real sharp. So what? Keep standing by on all, getting an earful. Hey, Lanigan. No, no, wait. What are you getting at? Apple balls. Cut it out. 
You didn't care how bad you made Harrison look as long as you got in a nice fat plug for yourself. Listen, I didn't come down here looking for trouble. Now, you just keep it up. You'll get your promotion and make a deputy chief out of you. Danny's quit in the force. He's going into law practice. On the level. He passed the bar. Everybody knows that. Oh, I'm sorry. It's my error. I had you figured that all wrong. Oh. Abe's going over the reports he told me to send in. Hey, Danny, what are you doing down here anyway? Slimming? Abe just asked me to keep him company. Oh? I was talking with him about some personal things. You know, the law. I'm trying to get away a little earlier. Oh, sure. Say, I think it's great you passed in the bar. Pat must be real proud of you, huh? Yeah, she's kind of happy. Guess you know how I feel. Sure. I tell you, Danny. Honest, tell me the truth now. You think I'm sort of falling down on a job here? No. Oh, come on, the truth. You can tell me. No hard feelings. Well, I didn't mean it that way in there before. This is a tough precinct. The toughest in the city. It's true, it is. Most people don't realize it. But I don't know, sometimes I think maybe it's my fault. Maybe if I could just put a little more into it. Abe's not satisfied, is that it? I never heard him say a word against you, Marty. You mean that? Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. All right, fellas. What about it? What about what, sir? We, we, we were just driving around when these cop... These officers pull us over and start giving us the business. Any law against driving around? There is when you're carrying these. Oh, all the guys carry them. In a rugged neighborhood like ours, you gotta protect yourself. Brass nooks? Bottle of whiskey? Ah, the hooch belongs to my brother. He must have left it in the car. So help me. You want to smell my breath? Think I'm being too soft with him, huh? No. Think maybe I got more important things to worry about at this time, huh? Is that it? Huh? Somebody's got to worry about him. Crummy homes. Crummy lives. Starting out on the wrong foot. It's your show, Marty. Yeah. Some show. Any of them got records? Not yet. All right, I'm giving you a break, just once. But keep your noses clean. Get the telephone numbers. I want to have a talk with their folks. Oh, and here. They haven't eaten yet. So buy them some hamburgers or something. OK, sir. All right, boys, let's go. Caught them. Assault. Robbery. Assault with a deadly weapon. Homicide. Attempted holdup. Not bad for a day's work. What do they think I'm expected to do? Leave me out of it, Abe. Nobody asked you, counselor. You bright boys give me a pain. What do you want? You promised us the story on that dame, chief. I got my rewrite man on the telephone waiting. All right, Lillian Dean, D-E-A-N, age 24, address tower apartments. Used to do an act at the hub. Now get out. Thanks. Fritz, you still there? There's your headline on that murder. Beautiful actress slain in love nest. Yeah, that's right. I'll make a Roman holiday out of it. Got them all on me. Press, commissioner, the ever-loving citizens. I'm a desk man, and I'm scattered over 19 precincts. Listen, if you can't see what's wrong, nobody can tell you. What? No, nothing. Come on, wise guy, tell me. Forget it. I've shot my mouth off and off around here as it is. You got all the answers. You know everything. You're not thinking about anybody but yourself. This place is dead on its feet, can't you see that? Needs a cathartic, a shake-up from top to bottom. Come on, what are you getting at? Harrison, he didn't make this filthy slum. He's just trying to police it. He needs good men, more of them, money. Sure, I know him. Harrison's a great guy, and he's got a great heart. But that doesn't win any wars. Dirty pool wins wars, that's all there is to it. You gotta toss away the manual, Abe. You gotta get a street fighter, not a boxer. A guy that can breathe some life into this place and some pride. <laughs> Where do I find this Superman? What do I do, reach in a hat and pull out a name? Well, that's your problem. Oh, now it's my problem. You had the guts to shoot off your mouth. What are you trying to do, needle me? Why don't you take over the precinct? Why not? Hey, it'd be a smart move. Clean up the district, it would be in all the papers. Publicity, you'd be a big man. You wouldn't start your law career as some punk law clerk. You'd be a full-fledged celebrity. Lay off, Abe. You're too smart. Scared. You know perfectly well you just break your head here. And that's what you think. All right, then. The job's yours. Did you bring me down here just to put me on the spot? You put yourself on the spot.
real mad? What do you think? 4.30. We had a date for 10. I know, but something came up. I'm sorry, sweetheart. Hey, I like that. Real fancy. Mm. Well, I don't feel real fancy. I feel like a gift wrap package somebody forgot to pick up. Give me time. I'll get there. Come on, sit down. You know, I like this modern gift wrapping. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to guess what the merchandise is. So help me, Danforth, if I didn't think you were going to be the biggest, most successful attorney in town, I'd leave you flat. Hmm. I'll murder him. You better. This negligee set you back fifty dollars. Fifty dollars on a cop's salary? On a lawyer's salary. Besides, you won't get the bill till next month. Reminds me, Mr. Finch called. We're invited for cocktails on the 12th. Next cabin class, huh? Yeah, that sounds great. Only, uh, I'm afraid we're going to be in steerage a little longer. What does that mean? Didn't you see Abe? Yeah, yeah, I saw him. Well, didn't you explain to him about the job? Wouldn't they let you go? Well, not exactly. What happened? Well, you know, you know all that trouble they've been having at the Heights. Well... Abe asked me to take over the precinct for a while, and, well, the long and short of it is, I said I would. You let them talk you into it? Well, he didn't talk me into it exactly. Look, Danny, I never interfered. Do I ever interfere? Only, I just don't understand. It'll only be a couple of months, Pat. And then another couple, and another couple. Danny, you did it the hard way. You were no pink-faced kid going to Harvard. Correspondence courses, night school, cramming pages between murders. Well, you finally made it. Now, why do you want to throw it all away? Well, they're in a jam, and, and I've got to help. What do you want, Danny? I married to you for 10 years, and I still don't think I know who you are. Isn't it enough to be a lawyer? Wouldn't it be nice for me to have a husband who came home on time, who worked regular hours, a regular, normal life? What are you looking for? All right, let's talk it over. I'll tell you what I'm looking for. You'll never win a case in court this way. Don't forget that is insignia. What's that? A knife. Well, I'm surprised. Here it is, the captain's first day in the job, but not a single posy from the boys. Oh, no. yeah, I can't Deal me in. Yeah. Sergeant Strauss, Heights Precinct. We picked up your car. No, abandoned. They swiped it and left it on the street. Oh, we don't know who. Now bring your keys. We had to tow it in. And you'll have to notify the Motor Vehicle Bureau. You hear me deny I knew Lily Dean? Of course I knew Lily Dean. Granted, no contest, but why should I be involved in this? They say you were her boyfriend. Boyfriend. Right away, I'm her one and only. Guy goes steady with a girl. One or two. Who wasn't her boyfriend? Mm. Swatos. Earl Swatos. Picked him up this morning. He works at the Hub, too. Legitimate work, Captain. Perfectly legitimate. Got a record on him as long as your arm. I never got no breaks. Environment. Was you ever a juvenile delinquent? Shut up. When did you last see her? Oh, Lily? You asked me when did I last see her. How do I know? I saw her the other night last week. I seen them all around the hut. Were you with her last night? I was with her last night. I never saw her. I never heard her. Ask anybody. I didn't even go to work last night. It so happened, fortunately for me, ain't it? No, oh, you took the night off. It so happened I had a very important appointment. What appointment? Uh, Captain, it's kind of a personal matter. Ticklish, you understand. Why should we drag a perfectly innocent party into what a... What appointment? Mary Abbott, Marcy Apartments. Ask her anything you want. She'll account for my whereabouts. She has to. It's the truth. It just so happened. Fortunately. Want us to hold him? Captain, I'll only be out. Why go to the trouble? No, throw him out of here. All right, out. Uh, you there. Strauss. That stolen car you were talking about on the phone just a minute ago. Did you check it with the lab? The lab? For prints and tire markings. Well, the lab made a record of it, I suppose. You suppose? Did you check it? Well, it was just a stolen car. Some guys picked it up and dumped it. Forget that. Get on it right away. Get down to the lab and don't release that car. We've had a report. Where's Lanigan? He's around here someplace. Well, I just saw Lanigan in the coffee room. Doesn't he know he's on a homicide case? All right, Strauss, get going. We didn't meet the other night. My name's Danforth. O'Neill. I thought maybe it was Culbertson. I've never seen you without a deck of cards in your hands. Well, it's been a little slack. Huh? You know what these are? Unsolved cases. 
They were here the other night, and I don't know how long before that. Unslack yourself, O'Neill. Oh, and you might pass the word along. There's a meeting in the lineup room at 3. All detectives, watch commanders, and squad sergeants. 3 o'clock. And I don't want anyone showing up late. There's a policeman who's going to make a name for himself or bust. Danny. For a lawyer, you're going about this pretty crudely, aren't you? Yes. Considering the situation in the building? What situation? Well, I just thought I'd mention it for what it might be worth to you. Get us, I read your file. You're the one man I want with me. Thanks. If you've got something to say to me, say it. Well, you know, you've got a little problem on your hands down here. You can imagine how they all feel. What do you mean, Harrison? Yeah, working with a man for four years makes for a certain amount of loyalty. You can put that kind of loyalty right in your eye. Nobody's grateful for it and nobody wants it. If anybody knifed Harrison, is mended it. The ones who loved him so much. Nobody down here would dream of doing anything to hurt Harrison. Bunk. They took advantage of a soft touch and a soft heart. They went soft themselves. Got rotten, fat, and lazy. Danny, man for man, I'll match this bunch against any precinct in the city. You'd lose your shirt. Don't forget, this isn't uptown. We get the crud detail down here just because we've had a little hard luck. Don't tell me hard luck. I happen to think people make their own luck. The cops are people. As long as I'm around, I don't want to hear any more about crud details or hard luck. From now on, we'll make our own luck. All right, Danny, just the way you want it. Just the way I want it. That stolen car you wanted me to check. What about it? It ties in with the Dean case. The tire markings are the same as the marks they found at the scene of the crime. The car that got away. Gee, that was a great hunch, Captain. Any fingerprints? They're running everything through. All right, let me know if they turn up anything. Right. Oh, by the way, Strauss, that wasn't a great hunch. I was just following routine procedure. You might try doing the same for a change. Ah, Counselor. Where do you get off dogging it? Take it easy, Danny boy. I'm just having a cup of coffee. When you're on a homicide, you don't sit drinking coffee. You don't sleep, you Take don't... it easy. There's nothing in this murder for you. No? No, Danny boy. No glory, nothing. Well, knock yourself out. There's just a plain, ordinary little murder. Lillian Dean was a human being. Good, bad, or indifferent. In the second place, the name's Danforth. Captain Danforth. Aye, aye, sir. You out of your head drinking on duty? I make it legal. You quitting? You bet. It's not the army, you know. You won't get a job guarding grave crossings. I'll give you a black eye from one end of the... In a pig's the eye, you will. Get this straight, Danforth. It's not the force I'm quitting, it's you. I like my job. I especially like it here on the Heights. And I'll tell you why I'm quitting. There's only one reason. It's because I pegged you for a phony from the first time I saw you. I'm not working for any no-good, backstabbing, glory. Don't rep. press it, Flanagan. Press it? Oh, Counselor, I'd be delighted for a tin nickel. You come real cheap. Back. You're staying on? Second thought, I decided I'd stick around a couple of weeks. It's as long as you'll last at this rate. And you don't know what a louse I can be. Oh, I know, but I'm curious, Captain. Two weeks. Two weeks. I'll sweat it out. All right. Starting tonight, you put on a uniform and begin pounding a beat. things to just take a minute. I uh, always buy the groceries for Madge. I like to buy them early in the morning when the markets ain't so crowded. Yeah, she doesn't get around so good lately. Trouble with the legs. Poor girl, sometimes when I see her trying to hobble around like that, it makes me feel so... We've been married 28 years. Always in love. Makes you kind of attached. Oh, uh, good luck, Danny. I mean, thanks, Marty. All right, here's the prescription. First, the radio cars. I'm putting one third of them in mothballs. And the men who rode them back on the streets walking beats where they can see at close range and be seen at close range. Second, the detective division. Any officer who's not working on a case or is just sitting around stewing over one will get special duty. I don't want to see any men just hanging around the squad room. There's plenty of scrounging to be done. Third, a new policy in dealing with criminals. Get tough. 
Muss him up. Two bit hoods in this area have forgotten what it means to respect an officer, and we're going to remind them. Any time a punk steps out of line, slap him back. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm green lighting any rubber hose treatment. Get that straight. But I'll back up any officer who has to use force. Pass that along. And finally, don't wait for trouble. Go out and look for it. I want arrests, and I want them in wholesale lots. Any questions? Okay, that's all. Black. <laughs> he sure reminds me of the old man. Danforth wants a rest. Let's give him a rest. Come on. Okay, fellas, let's go. Go where? What's the rap? Vandalism. Come on, boys. What for? What did we do? Vagrancy. Suddenly! Oh, I see. Where were you? Hey, what's going on? Calm before the storm, Greeny. Where is everybody? On the streets working. He wants to rest. Tracking down. The boy's a little mad. They'll be earthquakes. So he finally put a fire under you, huh? Hey, Greeny, tell me something. You newspaper boys are gonna go laying for the whiz kid wonder? We print the news. What do you want? Oh, don't get me wrong. Don't spare the horses for my sake. I'll give you my promise. I won't bust out crying. <laughs> lies, lies, lies. Cut my heart out. Persecute me. Stop crying, forger. Sit down. There's enough evidence on you to send you up for 20 years. I never forged a driver's license in my life. I wouldn't know how to do it even if I wanted. Where'd you get these for? I should drop that this minute if I ever did. What were they doing in your house? I got personal enemies, people working against me. Look, you're going to make it easier all around by giving us a statement. Statement? I'll give you a suit for false arrest. Shall we take him in the interrogating room? Give me your third degree. Go ahead. Get your rubber hoses. Who uses hoses nowadays? It's old fashioned. Towels. Towels soaked in ammonia. You think you're suffocating. You're not, but you think so. And no marks, no bruises. Cut it, Strauss. I told you I didn't want that business around here. Just a gag, Captain. Well, it's not funny. Not that I'd blame him if you did work you over. Filth like you doesn't deserve decent treatment. If I had my way... What's so terrible, all right? So see, I, I, I printed a couple of phony driver's licenses. So all right, it's just licenses. Then I kill somebody. You probably did, don't you know that? All right, you've got his confession. Book him. Look, watch your step. We've got enough on our hands as it is. We don't want any squawks. Okay. Hello, Captain. Oh, the servant of the public. That was a fine piece of advice you gave the youngster. You're right. Watch your step. Because it'd be a pity. I'd have to spread it all over the front page, wouldn't I? told me they brought in that Abbott girl. The alibi, Swatis alibi? Yeah, she's in there waiting for you. Danny, better go back and make your peace with him. Cozy him a little. These guys can make trouble for you. We need them. But we need a results. Let's get them. Miss Abbott? Everything Mr. Swatis told you was true. I was with him until the very early hours. Can I go now? Just a minute. I can corroborate Mr. Swatis in every single detail. You were with him till the early hours? Where? My apartment. Can I go? No. No, sit down. I thought Lillian Dean was his girlfriend. They had a falling out. When? I don't know. How long have you known Swatis? Long. How long? Ever since I went to work at the hut where we met. When was that? A week ago last Tuesday. A week ago last Tuesday? We're engaged. How much do they pay you there? Uh-huh. Fifty a week. Well, that dress costs more. Tips. Tips from whom? People who like the way I sing. Oh, you can sing. Hey. What do you work dives like the hut for? I'm just waiting for my rich uncle to die. I think it's right to do that kind of work? Works as a cashier in a restaurant, a diner. Only made thirty a week, and I was always arresting the boss anyway. So? Now I make more. What do you go around with Swatters for? What's the matter? He's a perfect gentleman. He's a hood. Earl? He don't even carry a gun. He was Lillian Dean's boyfriend, and they found her dead in an alley, murdered. Is that part of the questions, or are you just taking a personal interest? Okay. Is that it? Yes, you can go. Thanks. You're sweet. Have you ever been questioned by the FBI? Boy. Pardon me, Doc. It's all right. I think you've been took. Yeah, the whole thing is a fishy smell. I don't know what. What are you talking about, Swatos? Yeah, the way he jumped right out with an alibi. The way he had it all worked out. 
Why did he go to all that trouble if he didn't have something to be guilty about? Maybe he's getting a little nervous trying to take care of himself. They do that sometimes. If we could only bust this Dean case, at least that board would look a little cleaner. We'll get it. With all those rats, the boys are beginning to bring in, somebody's bound to sing. Sharp suitcase you got there. Let's take a look. Uh, I'm just holding for a friend. It ain't mine, you see what I mean? This, this here friend of mine. Uh, this friend, uh, she's a crook. Nice. Nice guy, he's just like to steal, you know. I... <laughs> Of money policeman in all my life. A man's entitled to a phone call. What are they trying to do? Ruin my reputation? All right, keep walking. Come on, hurry it up. All right, all right. What's the charge? Vagrancy. Vagrancy. Drunk and disorderly. Oh, Neil, look at this. Mashing, robbery, and all this and more to come. All you got to do is hang out a no vacancy sign. Hey, short! Get me a lawyer with it! <laughs> I'll say one thing for Danny, he didn't waste any time. Just be sure you spell his name right. Okay, he's got a full house. Now what happened? What always happens? What's he gonna do? Feed him and throw him out. Arrest. Well, what about it? Are you crazy? Expect me to file a bunch of half-baked complaints? That's just what I expect. Danny, my staff is overworked as it is on important stuff. What's important stuff? Murder? Bank robbery, grand larceny, syndicated crime? Look, this will all be important stuff someday, unless you play ball now. Look, you're a lawyer. You know that half those charges won't hold up in night court. I don't care. Let the court toss them out, but you file. At least I can hold them in the tank pending trial. But, but look, I'm supposed to clean up a cesspool. I didn't want this job. I didn't ask for it. But somebody's got to do this filthy rotten work, and this time it's me. Now I'm going to clean up that precinct, and you or nobody else is going to stop me. All right. You win. We'll file. Can throw away the keys. The DA's filing. The level? No kickouts? No kickouts. Just got the word. We'll show them now, boy. All of a sudden, we got nothing but enthusiasts on the force. What do you know? What am I supposed to do? Shoot off Roman candles or something? Nobody's writing stories about me. Well, for Pete's sake, give the guy a break. He's going to do a great job. Anytime, just like he gave Harrison, right smack in the neck. Hey, Captain. Hello, Potters. What's the beat? Gambling offense, Captain. A mistake in judgment. I don't mean to knock your offices, but they picked me up again. <laughs> Throw him in the cooler. Hey, Captain. Book him and fingerprint him and don't let him out without seeing me first. Yes, Captain. We'll get a breakdown on the places we tabbed last night. That's about it. You'll find the owners and employees listed alongside. Liquor stores, bars, clip joints, questionable residences. Leonard Eustick. There's a man with a big finger in the pie. Four bars and a pool hall. You know anything about him? Nothing on the books. He owns a lot of property, has nice loan business, sticks pretty close to it. Seems to be pretty clean. Don't kid yourself. A man can't count dirty money without soiling his fingers. We'll shake him up and see how much dust comes out. What are you going to do? Reduce some of Mr. Eustick's holdings. This is Captain Danforth. Get me Pete Kelly, the state liquor board. I've seen you, John. idea of the jerseys. I give them free. That's the way I am. Anybody who works for me, I want them to be happy. Calm nerves, Incorporated. Can I help it if I have a cheerful disposition? Well, the world's coming down around his ears, and he sits there signing checks. <laughs> the world is good for 200 million years, Mandy. It's a scientific fact. Right, Mr. Lynch? More or less, Mr. Eustick. Danforth adopts get tough policy. Police cracking down on Jefferson Heights. Offensive, gaining momentum. <laughs> tickles, Mandy, just tickles. The man is buying himself a reputation with a few headlines. A few more nights and things will be back normal. I suppose he gave you a written guarantee. <laughs> I know human nature. Well, you have to smoke those stinking things. A man lives with his infirmities. So give up smoking if you got asthma. The willpower. Human nature again. Everyone has a weakness. Find it, and you're rich. Yeah, only some of your bars and pool halls are going to close down. 
You realize how much our take has dropped? Thirty percent. Mandy, when you're in business, you must expect a few ups and downs. Uh, right, Mr. Lynch? There's always a certain amount of calculated risk, Mr. Houston. I got dealers and collectors in the tank. Tell them about the risks. Uh, maybe it's a good thing. Some of those yokels could stand the cooling. Well, don't let them get too cold, Leonard. They might try talking their way out. Well, let them talk. What are they going to say? That they work for gamblers? Do I run the gambling joints or the books? Well, you bankroll them. Prove it, Mandy. I'm no syndicate. I'm just a simple little man who makes a nice living. Fame I don't need. No wire service, no fancy dens, no big overhead. I cater to the dregs, but I'm happy. So who can hang me? They got swatters. He's sitting in jail right this minute. So? So he slugged Lily. Oh, that was a long time ago. Two or three days already. And how does that concern me? He'll talk. When it comes to murder, they lose their nerve. He'll talk so fast, it'll take three stenographers to take it down. Please. I can't stand arguments. After all, we had a good year, and we should be grateful. As far as this captain is concerned, forget it. Time will take care of him. And if it'll make you feel any better, I will take care of this swados, this hothead. Oh, what, uh, miss? Would you please bring me a phone? Yes, leave it to my lawyer. So. I just made the government $20,000 richer. My gift to Uncle Sam. Leonard, you fracture me. You pocket 50 grand a year anyway, so why pay 20? Why not keep it all? Mandy, when you live in such a wonderful country, it's a privilege to pay taxes. Well, thank you, dear. Anything on that getaway car in the Dean case? I just passed the lab, nothing yet. We've had that car almost two days. They've dusted it inch by inch, no prints, everything's smudged. We're getting nowhere. Running through to form. That's the way it always is. You start off with a big noise, all in headlines, and then everything peters out, and you're back to normal. Well, you're getting action. Like punks, drunks, vags. Danny, we're not magicians. We can only crack that Dean case, at least. Aren't, aren't the boys moving around? Can't they get any news? Nobody's got anything to say. What about Swatis down there in the tank? I talk to him every hour on the hour. All he wants to talk is Mary Abbott. I can't budge him. Well, I'll watch him. You've got to make a complaint. I'm confused. I'm sick. I want to go home. We can't do anything unless you sign a complaint. What's the matter with him? Mugged by a dame. A foul car fished him out of an abandoned building. Now we don't want to even sign a complaint. Where did you meet the girl? Look, I'm only a little barber. I mind my own business. I don't bother anybody. I work we hard. I can't now. get it out of him, Captain. But he was found in the neighborhood of that hut. The hut? That's all I seem to hear around here is the hut. Say, isn't that, a, isn't that another one of Eustick's places, that, that fellow Leonard Eustick? He owns the property. A guy named Mandy runs it. Mandy? George Mandy leases it. Why don't you want to make out the complaint? What are you afraid of? What am I afraid of? Plenty. Go ahead, talk. We'll give you all the protection you need. I promise you, they won't lay a finger on you. What they? There ain't no they. It's just my wife. Are you a married man? What's he doing here? I told you I wanted him locked up. She's got a writ. What writ? Habeas corpus. You said you wanted to be informed. All right, let him go. You see, Captain, everything comes to an end. Who sprung him? Some lawyer. The place where he works, the hut. They sent him down. Seems Swatos has some influential friends. Let's take a ride. Officer, I'm living a nightmare. If my wife finds out... Gonna fall in love with someone, but it ain't gonna be you. It ain't gonna be you. No, it ain't gonna be you.
Good night, church. Your goose is cooked. I never leave you alone. Just a little visit, Mary. It's supposed to be private. A dressing room. Can't you read? We just wanted to see the place where you work. You take an interest. Yeah. Well, look around. It's the best place in the street. The best? Four pieces and one orchestra. A man was rolled here this evening. Mugged. Here? In the hut? Well, this is where it started, anyway. This is where he picked up the girl. Grab stuff in this cup? That I never heard of. No. A little clipping, maybe, but rough stuff, no. He was beaten up and robbed. Man, his age, it could have been enough to kill him. Well, tell it to the management. What are you pestering me for? And don't go breaking my heart about those old guys. Did you ever see one of them in action? Like trying to argue with a diesel engine. Got it all down pat, huh? Look, what do you want with me? I've got a number to do. I've got to get changed. Anyway, I've told you everything I know. Baloney. It's the truth. Gladys told you to say it, so you said it. I've heard enough wrong stories in my time. I like that. Coming around here, treating me like a criminal. Oh, no, take it easy. Nobody's treating you like a criminal. I just want to have a little talk. With me? On the level? Yeah, I wanted to ask you to do something. Kind of a proposition. Well, it's all according, naturally. It uh, depends what... I just, uh, just wanted you to answer some questions. What questions? We'd make it worth your while, I guarantee. We'd have a thing to worry about, I promise. You, uh, mean you want me to tell you things? You're Swatis' girlfriend. Things I pick up? You know the setup, what goes on around here. You knew Lillian Dean. One of the girls worked the line just like you or any of the others. Something's got to be done. You want me to cooperate? Yes. Don't you see, with a girl like you, I could, I could move hard and fast. Will you do it, Mary? In a pig's eye, I'll do it. What kind of a dummy do you think you got around here anyway? Yes, I knew Lillian Dean, and I know what happened to her. Who do you think you're talking to, a ten-year-old kid? <laughs> Some guys. Just because a girl doesn't look like a hag, I think that means she got no brains and can't make any conversation. Well, what do you want me to do? Fall on my face just because you're a cop? What's a cop? A guy who steals apples from the corner stand. Okay, go on. Go on, get out, both of you. I gotta do a number and I gotta make a change. Go on, coppers, get out of here. Some of these dames scare the life out of me. I'd feel sorry for if I weren't so sore. I still think she can be worked. Ah, you're always messing things up. Oh, I told you to take it off on the third note, you dumb oh, boy. Oh, shut up. I smelled a rat the minute they told me you wanted to see me in here. Ever spent any time at that joint, Lanigan? But I? You mean that clip joint where they have all the muggings? No. Get us will fill you in and give you two men to work with. Why pick on me? I thought you might be anxious to get back into street clothes for a change. It's your smart way of riding me, Captain? The job. Somebody's got to do the dirty jobs. Oh. Never worked vice squad before in my life. That's why I picked on you. This assignment just happens to call for a fresh face. That's your only reason? You're the freshest I've got. Of course, you can pass it up if you want. If it's too much for you. Listen. Anything you can dish out, I can take. And you'll do it? Why not? It'll get me out of this monkey suit, sure. Good. Check with Geddes. Oh, and Lanigan, don't throw away that monkey suit. You'll need it when this is over. Want to pay 
now. Smallest you got? I thought you, you let me work on that. If I can't kill it, I'll bruise it real good. guy whose father gave him too much spending money. Been here long? Doubles. Pardon me, Doc. Hey, where do you get off? I said I beg your pardon, didn't I? Mine? Help yourself, honey. There's a whole plantation where those come from. Tobacco man, hmm? Somebody think you were in the jewelry business. Why, well, you're very observant. Hey, won't you let me buy you a drink? No, thank you. You're very careless. I'm careless? Flashing that kind of money in a place like this. Why, what do you mean? You'd be surprised some of the people that work here. What's the matter? Be surprised. Say, don't I know you? Well, what do you know? I just about to ask you the same thing. Were you really? It's a fact. Listen, how about that drink? Well, I guess I better. I mean, how are you going to know who to steer clear of unless I point out the bad ones? Hey, Maddie! Old plantation is calling. Over here, Mary. Thanks, honey. Well, let me give you some advice. Never let a stranger buy you a free drink. Give me your hand. What I want to know is, why is it always a calendar advertising a warehouse, huh? Hello? You. Is that why I'm here? Did you send that skunk down there tonight on purpose to get me? That's right, Mary. We watch everyone. I thought it was just routine. An ordinary routine pinch. Why, I don't understand it. What did I ever do in my life? I asked you once in a nice way. You asked me what? To help me, to cooperate. Well, what could I tell you? What do I know? Where his waters was the other night? I told you the truth. Why, they got him out of the tank in such a hurry? Why is so important to them anyway? Who he works for, Mandy, Eustick. What the whole setup is down there, everything. Listen, Copper, let's get this straight. I'm a tramp, okay, but that doesn't give you any license to kick me around. Take it easy. What are you trying to do, bulldoze me? Look, I'm not scared. I've been in here before. I'll get out of here Shut before up. you... You listen to me, Abbott, and you listen good. You come up with the stuff I want to hear, or I'll get enough evidence to put you in a cell for a year. Uh, I'll get a make sheet on you a mile long, and I'll get the DA to throw every page in the book at you. You ever been in jail in a real rap? 
They'll cut your hair. You'll wear gray cotton. No lipstick, no perfume, no boyfriends. Just walls. Now think it over. She'll cave in. By morning, she'll be hollering her head off. Here, you can wipe your fingers on this. Come on with me, Mary. All right, sit in there. Now sit back. Hello, Captain. Wait, I'll walk out with you. Are you still around? You went off duty an hour ago. Since I hear you have a hot lead. Oh, we'll see. Don't get yourself worked up. You never know. Sometimes it goes good, sometimes bad. We'll see how it is in the morning. Well, nice night. Yeah, hair feels fresh and clean. You better get home and get some sleep. A young fellow like you won't get that desk duty for another 20 years, you know. I know. Good night, Captain. Good night. Yeah, you give them a gun and they do whatever they want. Hi. Hi. And I'm late again. I know. It's perfectly all right with me, but don't you sleep anymore? How are you, sweetheart? Fine. I had a big day today. I think I finally got things going. If this thing works right, I can make some real headway. Wait. I got kippers, the kind you like. Oh, great. Shall I open them? Sure. See, what it is, Pat, down there, is that there are one or two or three fellas that are running the bulk of the grip. That means with one good hard shot, I could clean out a good part of that trouble. What's the matter? Nothing. I picked up a girl, one of those dives down there, and before I'm through with her, she's going to tell me a good lot of the stuff that I want to hear. You ought to see her, Pat. Hard boiled and so young. What are you looking at? Nothing. Only sometimes I see you so excited, so wrapped up. I don't know. I get afraid. What do you mean, afraid? I don't know. Well, you think I shouldn't be so rough on this kid? How can I tell? What do I know about her? Oh. Pat, what a sap I am coming home and talking about my work. What did you do all day? Nothing. What do I do? I cleaned up the house. I went shopping. I talked to my mother on the phone. Really? I've been talking to mother every day for the last ten years. Oh, yeah. Well, you see, this kid, this nightclub girl, is, is being used as an alibi in a murder case. I went out with a man today. Now, if I can crack that alibi, there's no telling Rich where old I... old guy, oodles of money, eight, five years old. What? Just forgive me, will you? But I, I've got it in my hand. I think I'm really ready to go. Hey, Brown, call up. No, I thought you were just with him. Well, I left him at one at the commissioner's. He said he'd call me as soon as he got definite word. Did they bring in Swattis? Forget Swattis and all that for a minute. You got yourself to take care of. Did you talk to Mary Abbott this I morning? I down at the city hall. Are they nervous? Sure, they're nervous. Did you see the papers? Those fellas have to worry about elections, votes, the facts of life. It'll work out, Bob. What about Swattis? He's down the hall waiting for you. They just brought him in. Did you talk to Abbott? You don't have a chance, Danny. You're wasting your time with her. How can you be so sure? Last night, all right. You had her going. This morning, with that baloney in the paper, she got her nerve back. You know how they are. Oh, this thing had to come along just now. Why do they do it, Bob? Why are they always so anxious to knock the police? Just a habit, I guess. Yes, Stanford. All right, put him through. Yes, Abe? 
Now, wait a minute. Well, didn't you show him the reports? Well, they're absolutely true. This is strictly a clean kid. It, it, it was an accident, a fluke. Yeah, yeah, I know about the commissioner's side of it. But don't you see, Abe, how can I get these crooks down here on the run if they know I'm being investigated myself? You're, you're tying my hands. All right. That eager beaver Strauss would have to throw a wrench. Annie. I did a job for you, huh? A butte. You would have to walk in just when I was sounding off. It's all right, Captain. Believe me, that's the least. Well, don't eat your heart out. You know how your mind works. You, you think if you'd only turn up the other street instead of that one, or if you'd gone to a movie, if... It happens. You didn't mean to do it. It's one of those things. He was a young guy, not even 30. Three little kids, little girls. When you're fighting a war, people get hurt. Sometimes nice, innocent people. And don't kid yourself, that's what you're doing here, fighting a war. Soldiering and being a cop are both dirty, dangerous jobs. There's just one difference. People love soldiers. They don't love cops. All right, I got a job to do, and I'm going to do it. Hearings or no hearings, Greeny, the newspapers, the commissioner, I don't give a hang. I'm beginning to resent this for the third time. It's getting a little monotonous. Hey, Captain, what's that? Sit down, I got blood pressure. I'll have a stroke. I got news for you. News? That wonderful alibi. What alibi? The dame, the girlfriend, Mary Abbott, the old cockeyed story. It all blew up right in your the face. The truth, the truth. What are you talking about? I was with her all the time. Who says different? She says. Who says? The dame, the girlfriend, Mary Abbott. Mary? She came clean this morning. Oh, I am laughing. What a gag. Use your head, Swattis. I'm talking to your own good. Boo! Don't I know? It's a trick. It's the oldest trick in the books. Cops always tell no, us. No, she's coming clean. Everything there is to tell. Save your breath. The heat's on you and you're taking out on me. You need a goat. Well, it just won't happen to work. I don't scare, see? You're gonna be left high and dry, Swattis, all by yourself. I talk, talk your head off. You know when I believe you? I believe you when that ceiling up there turns platinum. Figure it out for yourself. You don't have to go by me. Who is she? What kind of a dame did you pick to stand up for you? How long have you known her? What, does she come from a fine family? What are you two, head over heels in love? Look, Swattis, wouldn't she throw you to the dogs for a pair of nylons? Don't you see, Swattis, to you, Lily Dean was a dame, a troublemaker. To Mary Abbott, she's an oil well. Don't, don't mix me in with Lily Dean. You realize what you're saying? You realize what you're trying to pin on me? That's right, murder. The chair. It's a frame. No, no, Swattis, it's no frame. You did it. You made a bad move. You put your life in the hands of a cheap, ordinary tramp. A bluff. I ain't listening. It doesn't have to be the chair, Swattis. I don't hear you. Why should you burn? Do what the smart ones do. Talk. Turn state's evidence. Tell us who was in it with you. Now, think it over. Yeah, bluff. You got nothing on me. If you had, then why don't you lock me up? We'll get it. All we need. Well, here, put him on. Throw me in a cell. I don't want you in a cell. I want you to think it over. For your own good. For the good of everyone concerned. I can't get that just on you, Swattis. I want the rest. The people you work for. The whole arrangement. And I want you to come walking in here when you're ready and willing. All right, take him down to the process room. Look him over and see if he's got anything on him. And let him go. Put a man on him. I want to know every move he makes, where he goes, what he does, who he sees. All right, but don't you think you ought to prepare? Prepare? For what? You have these hearings coming up. You've got to get a case ready, you know. You're a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer now. I'm a policeman. I've got to get results. That's the only answer I can make. Well, isn't that right, Bob? Doesn't that make sense? Yeah. Watch, Swattis. Get word out that Mary's talking. Get it out on the grapevine. Steam him up. We've got to make him crack. I've got to force a break somewhere. I'll get it on the grapevine. Don't you worry. I'll steam him so high he'll fizzle. Sweat and blood. You guys sit there drinking cocktails. Please, Swaddles. I'm the one in a hot spot. Listen, if you think I'm going to burn, he calm. She can't do you any damage. Yeah. Why are you so positive she's going to talk? What's the matter with him? What did he argue with me for? Oh, don't you understand? He's got her locked up. Damn it. He's in bad trouble. He needs a conviction. Don't you read the papers? Don't you know what's going on? Be calm. It's a blessing in disguise. Well, what's a blessing? The opportunity of a lifetime. Nothing bad happens without something good being attached to it. Mandy, take him for a walk. Oh, wait a minute. Nobody's giving me a brush. No brush off. Now listen, everything's arranged. Don't get excited. What's arranged? We got you out, didn't we? And we get your lady friend out, too. That's what you want, isn't it? You rotten dame. Now go with Mandy. Everything will be all right. Very nervous person. High strung. So let me get it straight. You guys were hauled in when this crackdown started, right? Yeah, right. That's right. What were you? Nothing, uh... Vacancy. Car's tripping. Uh, nothing at all. Just a little after hour boozing. Shared the same cell? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What'd they do to you? Nothing. They let us go. Okay. Here's 50 now. 
50 more when it's over. But don't any of you guys cross me up. Okay, Matty, give him a sample. Don't get carried away with your work. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you guys? I do. Be seated. You may proceed with the witness, Mr. Wallace. Now, sir, will you please state your name? Dr. John Ayers. And your address? 1251 South Smithwood Drive. Now, what is your profession or occupation? Doctor of medicine. Are you licensed to practice medicine in this state? I am. And how long have you been practicing medicine? What have they got on now? Can you identify Some doctor testifying for three punks. What's that all got to do with Strauss? Search me. Did Swatter see him? Mandy and Eustick? Yeah, clearly said they were together for an hour. They came to my office for medical Danny. attention. And of course you gave them a thorough physical examination. Yes, sir. X-rays too? Yes, sir. Then on the basis of your physical examination, laboratory tests and X-rays, it is your opinion, Doctor, that these three boys did suffer severe internal and external injuries caused by beatings at the approximate time of their incarceration? It is. Wait a minute. We never laid a finger on these three punks. Everything in order. Please be seated, Captain. Well, can't you see this as a rigged up thing? Captain Danforth, I can assure you that this Board of Inquiry is interested in getting at the complete truth and you'll be heard. You may proceed, Mr. Wallace. Now, if you look closely at these two photographs, would you say in your opinion that these bruises could have been caused by beating with a rubber hose? Yes. All right. Now, just one more question. Were these injuries administered supposedly as a punishment for something you had done? No. They slapped us around for the heck of it. We were just having some fun. It was kind of a party. Now, when Captain Danforth took over the precinct, he announced a new policy. What was that? And remember, you're under oath. Well, he said to be firm and, and to... Wasn't the exact wording, get tough and mess them up? Well, well, yes, but he didn't go for... You've the... answered the question, thank you. And he tells me they'll shove a towel over my face and douse it with ammonia till I can't breathe no more. And the good thing is it don't leave no marks. Say, serving time's a pleasure compared to that. He, he said he wanted to crack down hard. Arrests, he says. The captain wants arrests. Get tough. From this pattern, there emerges the picture of an ambitious man, perhaps an overly ambitious man, who is determined to make his mark at almost any cost. A man who's quite sensitive to the value of publicity. He drove his officers. Where there were no criminals, he manufactured a whole supply of criminals. Where there was no evidence, he knew how to get evidence or confessions. And from this pattern, Surely, inevitably, what was bound to happen, what in fact did happen, the wanton, the totally unnecessary, the totally inexcusable slaying of an innocent man, a citizen, husband, father of three small children. It isn't the end of the world. No. I'm not going to stand around watching you beat yourself over the head. All right, you took a licking. It's finished. Sure. You passed the bar. You wanted to be a lawyer. Why don't you call up Mr. Finch? That job must still be open. I couldn't even get my foot in the front door. Don't you see, Pat? I'm spoiled merchandise. There are lots of law firms. What a laugh. Everybody thought I was out to make a reputation, to be a big shot. We could move. What? Leave town. This isn't the only city in the country. No. Why not? We could make a fresh start someplace. I said no, Pat. No, not my husband. He was born a cop and he'll die a cop. I can see where I'm going to have a lovely time with you the next couple of weeks. Busy? Yes, he's busy stewing, eating himself up alive. Hello, Bob. Sit down, join the wake. How's the kid taking? Strauss? Not bad. 
Sure was a big help to him. Who was that guy anyway, that lawyer? Oh, you mean a guy that did all the spouting? Yeah, where'd he come from all of a sudden? Houston's man, Houston and Mandy, they're all in this together, just as you thought. So I had him right in my hands, ready to go. Another week, another day or two. Look at him. Pat. Why didn't you stop fighting? It's over, you lost. There's nothing more you Leave can Leave me do. alone, Pat. I'm sorry, sweetheart, forgive me. Bob? Yeah, what is it? What about the girl now, Mary Abbott? They got a court order, we've got to let her go tonight. Well, you realize the fix she's in? Swatos? Yeah, he's been hanging around her house all afternoon, watching for her, waiting. Cleary told me on the phone. You laid it out for him, all right. That screwball maniac's got it set in his mind now that she ratted on him, that his life's not worth a nickel as long as she's still around. Well, what do you want me to do about it? What can I do? I don't know. Talk to Rowan, give her protection, get her out of the state, anything to keep Swatos away from her. No. No. Let them get together. Don't say anything to Rowan or anyone else. Don't say anything to the girl. Just let her out tonight. She'll go walking right into her grave, Danny. Yeah, but we'll watch it. We'll be on top of it all the time. We'll do everything humanly possible. Don't you see, Bob, when they get together and they start scrapping, it'll all come out. The whole deal, every lead we have to have. What do you think you're going to do? This girl is a human being. She might be killed. It's her only chance, Pat. We've got to do it. You don't really care. You want what you want, and it doesn't make any difference who gets hurt or how many people get killed. You've got to show the world what a big man you are. All right, go ahead, show them. Danny, I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for myself. Come on, Bob, let's go. It's in him, Pat. He can't help it. But always remember this. If anything goes wrong, if anything happens with that girl, they'll slap him in jail for 20 years, and he knows it. He knows it, Pat, but he's going ahead anyhow and take his chances. He's got to. You didn't have to get into this thing, Strauss. Try and keep me out. We need them, all the men we can get. I wish we had one or two more. I know. How about the girl? They're holding her at the station on 10.30. That ought to give us time enough. Did you get a squad car to drive her home? Just as you said to the door. You get the apartment next to hers? Yeah, a married couple. I sent them to a show and got them a room in a hotel. Where's Swatis? Over at the hut. The hut? Yeah, they're having some kind of a celebration over there. They ought to be holding a block party. All right, Strauss, go down there. Take over. Stay on him. Don't let him out of your sight. Don't worry. What are you doing here? Nothing. Just passing by. What's the matter? Is this some kind of a private fight, or can an Irishman join in? You know what you're letting yourself in for. All right, let's go. Sure come in handy. Yeah. Yes? Hello, Strauss. Well, Swatis is here. Now, he isn't making a move. It looks like he might be set for the night. Yeah, the place is jammed. Big crowd. Hold it a minute, Strauss. He says Swatis hasn't made a move. What do you think? Maybe I got the wrong idea. Maybe he's not worried about her at all. I don't know. We may be beating our brains out for nothing. Yeah, but Swatis was hanging around here all afternoon. Maybe he's just taking his time. You don't think you got wives, do you, Danny? Strauss, listen. What? No, no, I'm positive. He didn't spot anything. Yeah, yeah, I told you. The place is jammed. Everybody tanked up. Yeah, yeah, I'll stay right with him. Yeah, sure. I'll call you back. Thanks for the ride, boys. See you around. She's coming up.
up. Oh. Oh, hello, Mary. Hi, Martha. Uh, say, Mary, I got a message here for you. Oh. <laughs> party. Right now I can use a party. See ya. <laughs> yeah, okay. No sign yet. Danny, quick. Come on. 42 Drake Street. Did you see Mary Abbott? Yeah. She just went out that way. I give her a phone message. They said it was very important. I should tell her as soon as she come in. It was a party. Well, where? What was the address? Well, I don't know. I wrote it down on a piece of paper. Let me see. She threw it somewhere. There, there it is. These girls always go into parties. 42 Drig Street. Yeah. Okay, Bob, listen. Call the station. We've got no choice. Code 3, all units. Got to flood that place with men. Let's call in. I got...
right, don't shoot. I'll tell you anything, anything you want to know. I'll tell you all about you, Stick. Don't kill me, please. Okay, that's it. You can send the cars back. Did you check on Strauss? You'll be all right. Good. Get Swatters down to the station house and the girl, too. Okay. Russell up some stenographers and get it all down while it's hot. And don't let him forget about Eustick. I understand. You coming back to the station? Not tonight. I want to let Pat know everything's all right. How about tomorrow morning? I'll be there tomorrow. As a matter of fact, Bob, I'll be there from now on. Good night, Captain. Boy struck by auto.